Welcome to the Lakeside Productions YouTube channel. In this series, I'm repairing a 1940 seaplane tender and repairing it back into a liverboard, which it was converted to after World War II. The boat is 40 foot long and constructed of double diagonal mahogany and oak ribs. First off, I'm doing the routine checks when I jump aboard, making sure that the bilge pump is working, that the bilges are dry, and emptying the dehumidifier. Today we'll be installing this 4 kilowatt autotherm diesel heater into the engine room. By installing this heater into the boat, it will allow me to heat the boat throughout the year for months that maybe the cover could be on the boat, that obviously then I cannot use the stove because of the chimney. I can pipe hot air into each of the rooms and it also means that I could move aboard and continue fitting out the interior of the boat until the good weather comes around where I can resume fiberglass and epoxy work on the exterior. I made sure to hoover out any debris or flaking paint that was within the bilge that had built up over time. And it's obviously it's good practice to do this so that you can guarantee that nothing will jam your bilge pumps as well. So I also sprayed a distilled white vinegar and water solution on the walls of the engine room. And this just was to remove any mold that might be forming there. There was small specks of, of mold there and um, nothing crazy, but it was just minor. And this was just due to water ingress, rainwater ingress getting in uh, above deck where I had just put down temporary, I'd laid down temporary plywood and this is not for exterior use and it's very bad quality knowing that I would have to replace this and that I will replace this next with uh, marine grade plywood. Of course, the decks need to be epoxied, fibered last as well. So that is in due time when there's good weather, I will get to that. So I then just applied thickened epoxy to all of the joints and end grain of the plywood to guarantee no water ingress, that rainwater wouldn't get in there. And this is especially important where the diesel heater will be mounted under directly underneath this section, so I had to make sure that it was sealed. My father removed the end barrel connection off the 12 volt transformer that we bought especially for this. Because we have mains power, we can run directly off mains uh, that were moored up at this time. In the future, we can always change it out to solar and a, a battery bank, but for now, we have mains. So once my father stripped off the connection, you're left with two different uh, strands of wires. The center wire in our case is positive and the outer coil of wires okay, are negative. Now. And you just want to double check this with a voltmeter because this may not always be the case. We have an old petrol tank that we'll use with this diesel heater, making sure of course that it's dry, that's cleaned out because diesel will be going in this. So for the fuel pipe pickup, we made sure to cut a 45 degree angle on it and also making sure that it was a couple centimeters off the bottom of the tank. And this is advised in the instructions. Make sure you read the instructions thoroughly as well, guys. And we were referring back to the instructions throughout this build. So it was as simple as just drilling a pilot hole and then using the stepped bit to get to the desired width for the actual fuel line pickup or the actual connection. Uh, and that way then we can just tighten down the washers. It's a really neat setup here and uh, very straightforward in installing. Oh, it's a gap for the gap of the metal, the thickness of the metal. Yeah. Oh, it is clever, isn't it? Mm -hmm.
this flexible rubber pipe it comes with the actual kit itself and uh, making sure not to over tighten any of these connections because you want the pipe to be uniform and you do not want it to go out of, out of shape. So using the hole saw bit then to cut our true hole to take our exhaust, this will be our exhaust out and we're also cutting it a little bit bigger, the diameter is bigger than what we need because of course we want to be able to fit our fire retardant piping or tubing on there as well. And again uh, we're going to put a vent on the outside and as well I want to put fire cement around that join, around the, the true hole as well. So just to guarantee that it's a good seal and that no, this will not get hot will not heat the uh, surrounding wood to a dangerous temperature because of course this gets to I believe 500 degrees uh, Celsius and you want to make sure that it's it's well protected uh, I also made sure to put a few layers of epoxy on the end grain and um, so it took two sessions and I built that up just to make sure that no water can ever ingress into that double diagonal mahogany or any of the exposed wood So mounting the actual heater is straightforward. The plate it sits on, we made sure to put a 90 degree bend on it and this would allow heater to sit flush and level. So all of the electrical connections are plug and play, just make sure that you securely clip them together and you're all set up with the wiring. So attaching the fuel line again straightforward, it might be a little bit robust, you gotta really kind of force it on there. Uh, you could also heat it a little bit, just be very careful. You do not want to deform the fuel pipe, um, but I did have to heat it a slight bit with that uh, heat gun that I have. And just made it a little bit more malleable that I could actually attach it, because without that, it, it was very hard to get it sent the whole way up secure um, under or through that fuel line. So you want to make sure that you can get that on there 100%. And again, you're, they provide all the attachments uh, to make sure it's secured. So attaching the fuel pump is recommended to install it anywhere between 15 to 35 degrees. So over the next few days I would also like to get a fuel filter and just to install that before the fuel pump 
and just to guarantee that there's no dirty fuel getting in or you know also condensation in the form to make sure that no condensation can get through um, and to make sure that everything will run smoothly The air intake hose is just temporarily attached to the Douglas fir in order to run the heater and I will also do another true hull. I will cut through the side of the boat again and mount that outside as recommended. But for now, because there's so much fresh air actually getting into the engine room, it's not sealed. So there's no problem there. Of course, the, the only danger would be if I was running the engine. So this is why you don't attach the air intake into the engine room. But these engines aren't being run, uh, so that's not a problem. But again, uh, I will get to that shortly. As always, attach your air intake through to the fresh air on the outside. So using the comfort control is very simple as well. It's all there in its own instructional manual. So for us, it took kind of three attempts, we could say, until the heater was booted up and, and running as normal. You know, that's it going through its self-diagnosis, its priming, its self-priming process. And you will hear different components within the heater itself start up. And this is, again, all written within the instructional manual. So once the heater was booted up and, and ready, you know, you can obviously we set our heat to about 25 degrees and you can set the duration of how long you want the heater on for as well. So that was it. And it's installed and running fantastically. Of course, now we just have the heater up against the bulkhead. We will cut that uh, true hull. Well, it's not a true hull, I suppose it's a true bulkhead um, within the plywood that it's pressed up against and that would allow us to attach on our ducting to duct our air throughout each room. So that's all for this episode guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's fantastic to finally have heating within the boat. Again, you know, we can't use the stove because the cover is over the boat, so that's why the heater is perfect for that. And yeah, I'm delighted to finally have it installed. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Please do leave a like and subscribe if you have not subscribed to my channel already. If you feel like further supporting my boat restoration or boat project, I have a PayPal link in the description below. Or you could just share this video with uh, friends and family who are also interested in this content and I would really appreciate it. So thank you guys. Stay productive and have fun creating. I will see you in the next episode.